Unleash the fury. Bang! Unleash the fury, man! All right, we're back with another episode here at Hashtag Sports. I am Paul, and that is... Shit, you're over here. Ryan. <laughs> Brian. I don't weather man very good, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not my thing, I promise. Uh, so we're here to talk about, uh, is Brandon Bean rebuilding the 2017 Carolina Panthers? Ryan and I just cut a couple episodes already, uh, which you'll want to go check out. We talked about the uh, Bills and the NFL draft, uh, kind of grading the, you know, the draft pick by pick. Uh, obviously on the macro level, looking back. And then also we talked about the state of the bills. What does, you know, their decisions in the past, how did that kind of haunt them? How is it shaping up the roster right now? Um, things you could get away with and things that they won't be able to get away with great episodes. You'll want to go check those out. And while you're here, make sure you drop a like and a comment. And of course, give us a follow. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We respond to almost every single comment. Um, and, uh, we want to, we want to know what you think. So an uncomfortable conversation here, Ryan, talking about Brandon Bean rebuilding the 2017 Carolina Panthers, because as an organization, I don't even think they've ever put together back-to-back 10-win seasons. Um, I don't think ever. Maybe they have. I'll go back and look, but I don't remember them ever doing it. And 2017 was off the cusp of 2015 when they went 15-1. and one. Then they had just a hellacious 2016 season going 6-10. and 10. And then 2017, which would have been Beans last year there, they went 11-5. and And if you start pulling back the layers of what's there, I think there's a lot of similarities between what the Bills are doing right now in 2017 versus, you know, what the what Carolina did in 2017 versus what the Bills are doing now. Um, So let's talk about that a little bit. I think there's always that comparison of Josh Allen to Cam Newton. I think it's a very justifiable comparison. And if you look at the Bills receiver room right now, you almost feel like they're going to have a, I'm going to put the team on my back mentality from Josh and will them to victory. I think Carolina depended on that in, at least in 2015, like they depended on cam to be the best player in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, he was, that was the season, you know, that, uh, well, Cam, I mean, cam Newton, there was a reason that they were, they called him Superman. Right, like he carried yep. Auburn to a national title. They he mm-hmm. carried the Carolina Panthers to uh, NFC title games, to a Super Bowl, to you know, just wide receivers that had no business being in the NFL, like Devin mm-hmm. Funches, right? Like, remember that mm-hmm. guy? I, yeah, th- you know, who never did anything after he left Carolina. Same thing with Kelvin Benjamin, never did yeah. anything after he left Carolina. A name that Bills fans are familiar with, Curtis Samuel. Like, mm-hmm. these are guys that they played that cam newton played with and they were their offensive philosophy was just cam just go do what you do and hopefully the guys around you will catch it if the ball's thrown their way and Mm -hmm. you know i think i think you know you've got a more reliable version of that here in buffalo this year but i think the big problem is is that you're counting on a lot of guys to have career seasons and When you lose a guy like Stefan Diggs, say what you want about Stefan Diggs, his productivity towards the end of the season, his age, his contract situation, things like that, like all those things kind of added up into why is he no longer in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's something to be said for, I know what that guy's going to do, and it's going to be really good on the field. But you're looking at Curtis Samuel, you're looking at Khalil Shakir, you're looking at Keon Coleman, and you're like, Hey, can all of you just like have career seasons at the same time? That'd be great because yeah. then we can win some football games, right? right. Like that's not a, a recipe for optimism. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they well, do, or maybe all three of them do, but yeah, yeah. I mean, well, and I think that's you know, the, we were, had a front row seat for what made the New England Patriots dominant through 20 years, right? Yep. And part of it was you just simply never knew what New England Patriots team you're going to get. There were games where they come and run the ball 35 times and just run run the ball down your throat and just dominate. And there were other times where Brady would throw for 385 yards and five touchdowns, right? And he would do it six yards at a time and and you know just completely dominate time of possession in the game. And you just never knew really what you were dealing with there. Buffalo has never been that way, right? Right. Buffalo is a, this is our offense. We've got this trick. We want you to try and stop it. You know, like even when Buffalo was given the opportunity to run the football and gain tons of ground, uh, you know, running the ball, they get away from it. 
right? And I, and it's just been an identity issue since Sean McDermott has gotten here where they just seemingly have one trick that they like to do over and over and over again. And like in the Kansas City game in the uh, in, at home this year, you know, we had a front row seat to that. Yep. And it was tough to watch them on offense because there was just no continuity. Kansas City had figured them out. And, you know, I don't feel like this is any different right now. Uh, when you look at the Bills wide receiver room, but you do have the same near unaccomplished group of receivers <laughs> as you had in Carolina in 2017, which was again, beans last year. So let's go over what that roster was real quick. So they did have Jonathan Stewart and mind you an age 30, Jonathan Stewart at running back a 21 year old Christian McCaffrey um, and your favorite Fozzie Whitaker. Uh, I know you love you some Fozzie, uh, but at wide receiver, it was Curtis Samuel, who was 21 at the time. Uh, Russell Shepard, who was 27, Kalen Clay, former bill. He was 25, uh, Damian bird, who I think had what a, five targets that year, 17 targets, excuse me. Don't need to diminish the man. Uh, Devin Funches was 23. He had 111 targets that year. Kevin Benjamin, 51. And then uh, Greg Olson and uh, Ed Dixon as your uh, as your tight ends. So again, I understand the game of football has changed quite a bit, right? Like Jonathan, an age 30 Jonathan Stewart, uh, a 21-year-old Christian McCaffrey, like you, they don't make Christian McCaffrey's every year. Right. Even at even at 21, he was dominant. They don't make Christian McCaffrey's every year. But you look at the wide receiver room and you have a 21 year old Curtis Samuel, a 25 Kalen Clay, again, who had kind of bounced around the NFL a little bit at that point. But Devin Funches and Calvin Benjamin. And I don't I don't want to be the lazy guy who calls Keon Coleman, former FSU wide receiver, similar to Calvin Benjamin, former FSU receiver. Um, but I think there's some similarities in the fact they're both really big bodied guys and Kelvin Benjamin and Keon Coleman aren't exactly known as separators, right? Like that's, that's not what they do. They won routes through their physical nature and they run one routes through contested catches. They are the, I'm just going to go get it guy. And Kelvin Benjamin, again, to his credit, had a lengthy NFL career where people talked about him. Like he was a top 20 player at times and good for him. Right. Do I think Keon Coleman is that level of player? I don't know. Yeah, I think you're going to learn a lot about Keon Coleman uh, in the next four months that nobody can answer. You're just going to have to see how it plays out. But I don't want to be that lazy guy and say that there's there's a comparison there where the, there's a comparison there that isn't there. Do you think that there's a comparison there? Yeah, I mean, there's every reason to compare the two guys in terms of what their draft profile looks like, right? Like Calvin Benjamin came into the draft big. Uh, he came into the draft as like he plays faster than his four six one forty time, which mm -hmm. is something that when we did the draft show and we've heard Bills media, uh, quote unquote Bills media over the last week since the draft say that Keon Coleman plays faster than his four point six one forty at the combine. Yeah. They ran identical forties yeah. at the combine. He's a you know, again, you could you could break down the draft profile of either guy, leave out the name, and ask who I'm talking about, and it would be yeah. I can't tell you. It's really who it similar. Is. It's really yeah. similar. Yeah. Now again, there's for that's not to say that that's what Keon Coleman is going to be. I think there were a of lot course. of circumstances working against Kelvin Benjamin that turned him into what he was. He he had always been a guy where the question was, does he really want to do this? Mm -hmm. I think that was a big thing that you don't hear about Coleman that you did hear about Benjamin was there was, there was the want to there. Mm -hmm. um, the personality, right? Like Calvin Benjamin had, was always a fairly reserved player. He was never a guy that was open and, and, you know, bombastic and things like that. And Keon Coleman, by everything we've seen of him thus far, is absolutely a personable guy. He loves what he does. He wants to, you know, wants to be good. He wants to joke around. He wants to have a good time. Um, so, you know, I think there's, again, and that Carolina team in general was just a shit show. I mean, it was... Yeah. It was, I mean, you know, Christian McCaffrey couldn't stay healthy and no. Greg Olson couldn't stay healthy. Kelvin Benjamin had trouble staying healthy. Mm -hmm. um, Devin Funches was your wide receiver one, which wasn't going to be a recipe for any kind of success in any no. way, shape or form. Right. So there was, there was definitely a lot of things working against Kelvin Benjamin. Mm -hmm. 
that I don't think are working against Keon Coleman. Um, right. But again, there's reason for concern because we've seen this type of player come in before mm -hmm. very similar background, very similar metrics, very similar measurables. And he, it yeah. didn't work out. And well, that's, that's cause for concern, I think. And when you have Keon Coleman, and then you look at the other receivers that Buffalo is targeting as quote unquote wide receiver too, right? Don't get me wrong. I, I like Shakir a lot. Shakira from an advanced metric standpoint had some of the best separation numbers in the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. So let's not forget that he's a part of the offense. Uh, but for the sake of the rest of the argument, you also have on the roster, Matt Collins, Justin Shorter, and Chase Claypool, who are all 6'4". Devin Funch is 6'4", is right? Like, again, you, you have a type here that feels like it's being recreated. And one of those players is going to make the roster. I mean, I'm likely to believe that it's Justin Shorter out of the three of them, right? If you had to pick one, it's I'm likely to believe it's Shorter just because you're likely going to lose him otherwise. I don't think they have a lot invested really in Matt Collins. You can get out of that deal. And they don't have anything invested in Chase Claypool from everything that we understand. Uh, the fact that he was still available tells you just what the rest of the NFL thought about him. Um, so he's likely a player you could even add to your practice squad, uh, mm -hmm. not really be too worried about. But the fact of the matter is that we've seen this roster building before, and it just feels very familiar. Now, there's no Christian McCaffrey on this team. Like, there's not, there's not a fragment of Christian McCaffrey on this team at the running back position. But it does feel very underwhelming with the wide receiver room, yet you have a dynamic athlete like Josh under center. And going back to 2015, 2016, 2017, there's the exact same thing that Cam Newton went through. Now, to the to his detriment, was that what caused Cam Newton to be the player that he ultimately developed into? Because he was the, I'm just going to have to go do it myself guy. And are we worried that Josh is going to end up being cut from that same cloth, given the talent around him? I, I don't think so. I think Cam Newton... His biggest problem came for Cam Newton was always Cam Newton was well, <laughs> Cam Newton was always Cam Newton's biggest problem. But, well, that, but I, Cam Newton was always the true what we joke around about, like Lamar Jackson and Michael Vick. Like, ah, he's a running back who throws the ball. Like Cam Newton was a legitimately a running back who threw the football, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was not a quarterback first. He was a quarterback because he was the most athletic player on the field. He was the best runner, so get the ball in his hands every single snap from the point where he picked up a football until the point where he retired from the NFL. That was the mindset that, that he had. Mm -hmm. Josh Allen is a guy who I think you've seen his game evolve from being a, I got to go throw everybody on my back at Wyoming to his rookie season in Buffalo, where he had to throw everybody on his back and try to win football games to Stefan Diggs getting there and being like, you don't have to do this by yourself, right? Like you need to learn how to do this as part of an offense. And I think Ken Dorsey helped him over the last two seasons, figure out how to be part of an offense versus the whole of the offense. I think Joe Brady's going to continue that. Um, and I think Josh Allen is far more open to it than Cam Newton ever was. Cam Newton was never a passer that, that struck fear in the hearts of defensive coordinators, right? He was a playmaker who, mm. who did that. Um, and I think Josh Allen has learned to become just as dangerous with his legs as he is with his arm, um, which Cam Newton never, never adopted that, that type of philosophy. Well, I challenge you a little bit on that, Ryan, because I think Ken Dorsey tried to make Josh Allen the pocket passer. And we saw what the first half of the season looked like. It cost sure. Ken Dorsey sure. his job, you know, like, and, and Joe Brady comes in and then says, yeah, Josh, I know your shoulder's busted. You're still going to run the ball five times a game. Like, it's got to be in the offense. Don't have a choice, right? That's It's going to be what it is. There's going to be five, six design runs for you every single game. I know that's not what's been called at the beginning of this season. That's not what we're going to do. We're, we're going to go back. We're going to roll the film back a little bit, and we're going to go with what we know works, and we're going to go back to last year. We're going to start pulling I, I think, from last year. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the offense definitely was less – impactful when Josh was a pocket quarterback. But I think what what he came from that was you saw that when Joe Brady took over, the designed runs were there. Absolutely. He needs to be able he needs to run the football. I don't think anyone's going to argue that that Josh mm -hmm. Allen has to figure out ways to run the football. What I thought you saw less of with Joe Brady at the helm, and I think it partly plays into what Dorsey drilled into his head was you saw Josh bailing early less. As, mm -hmm. as as Joe Brady took over. Those those runs were there, 
But you saw a lot in Josh's early part of his career where it was, you know, three step drop, five step drop. He'd hit that back foot and he'd go because that mm-hmm. get first read wasn't there, um, or he felt phantom pressure that just wasn't there. Um, you saw less of that last season, specifically because I think Dorsey didn't want him to run the football and told him don't run the football. But then when Brady started adding in those runs, Josh was kind of like, oh, okay, so I'm still going to be able to be dangerous with my legs. I'm just, I just also need to be patient in the passing game. So that's kind of what I mean where I think Dorsey helped him grow a little bit, not through a successful offense, but just in more changing the philosophy and the way he looks at things and saying, Mm. I don't need to bail. If, if, you know, I need to trust my offensive line, the pressure isn't there. It truly isn't there. And I need to be able to go through my progressions, which is something that he hadn't done until maybe last season might've been the first time that we ever really saw him go through true progressions. Mm. Um, and again, that was, those were things that, that Cam Newton never did. He never adapted to that style of football play. It was always like my first reads, not there I'm going. And, um, that to, to his detriment, I think cost him his career and he, he went downhill quick. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, the only reason that I bring it up, right. Is because, I think there's enough comparisons and, and don't get me wrong. I understand the Sean McDermott connection. I think this is something we would have gotten to regardless, right? Yeah. Because you look at, you look at the, you look at the organization's history and you look at the people that make up the organization and that's where you get these connections, mm-hmm. right? You don't look at Sean, the fact that the head coach coached in Carolina, like that, that doesn't matter to me. It's like, where did the rest of the organization come from? Like Joe Brady came from Carolina, but he also came from mm-hmm. new Orleans. Like mm-hmm. what similarities are there? You know, like these, everybody that's on staff has a history and a story to tell, but there's a lot of similarities between this 2017 Carolina Panther team for on an offense on the offensive side of the football, because they were, that was, I mean, they had a winning record, right? But they really bargained basement shop for their, for their, their wide receiver help. Like they had no interest in signing guys in free agency at the wide receiver room. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar, right? Like they really thought, listen, we're going to draft guys and, you know, we're, we're just going to put draft picks on guys and, you know, it's going to, it's just going to work out for us. Like Devin Funches was drafted 41st, you know, like, yeah. like Curtis Samuel was drafted. Uh, what was he? He was drafted 40th, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's a thing here. This is what they did in Carolina is they threw second round picks on wide receivers and said, look, everybody, we're solving the problem. And I think that kind of mirrors what a lot of Bills fans are ultimately very concerned about because the same thing is happening here, right? Like, yes, you traded away a first for Stefan Diggs, but you still haven't drafted a first round, a first round, first round wide receiver here, right? right? There's yeah. no, there's none here. You'd look around you. There's none. I mean, it, even the guys that you sign aren't first round wide receivers. You know, like you you now have KJ Hamler and Chase Claypool. They, they weren't first round wide receivers. You have Curtis Samuel. He wasn't first round wide receiver. Like it's not a thing in Buffalo for them. That it's right. it's not the priority. And it's because it wasn't a priority in Carolina. And again, that has nothing to do with Sean McDermott. It has everything to do with Brandon Bean because it's how the organization was being run. And you could say the exact same thing, just like you had mentioned about if you compare the draft profiles between Keon Coleman and Kelvin Benjamin and just erase the names, you could take the fan feedback from the 2016 to 2017 Carolina Panthers going into the 2017 season and put it against what Bill's mafia is saying. And you won't be able to tell the difference. It feels the same, you know, with exception to Christian McCaffrey, like that's the separator and there's no separator here in Buffalo. I mean, even, even looking, I mean, you can look across, I mean, it's, it's interesting as you dig into it, right? Like yeah, that the offensive line in Carolina, they had one guy that was older than 27 years old. That mm-hmm. was Matt Khalil, who was their left tackle at 28. Yep. This Buffalo Bills offensive line has one guy that's older than 27 years old. That's their left tackle, Deion Dawkins. Everybody mm-hmm. else is 27 years old or younger. Yep. And, you know, they, they have, yeah. uh, they had a great, a great defense led mm-hmm. by, you know, Luke Keekley at the time. Yep. Buffalo Bills have arguably, again, I think they've done enough this offseason to be a great defense. They're going to mm-hmm. be a top 10 defense in the NFL again. Maybe top five because McDermott and Babich, I think, are good enough defensive minds where they're going to get them there. So, I mean, there are a lot of similarities to it. I think the 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 big wild card difference is I think you're better at quarterback, yep, offensively, mm-hmm. uh, and I think you're better at the head coaching position 
as much as I criticize Sean McDermott, he's better Ron than Ron Rivera. Rivera. Ron I Rivera is the other side of that coin, right? Yeah. And then the other differentiator, I think, on the offensive side of the football is you're wildly more talented at the tight end position. And yeah. it, the NFL has grown to the point where the the tight ends have become very um, impactful. And you like you brought uh, earlier, you brought up the New England Patriots and, you know, how they were able to sustain success. The other way they were able to sustain, you know, sustain success was they had two monsters at the tight end position. They yeah. had Rob Gronkowski and they had Aaron Hernandez. And listen, I don't know if Dalton Kincaid is as good as Aaron Hernandez. I know he's not as good as Gronk because there's like three guys that are as good as Gronk has ever been. Mm-hmm. I know Dawson Knox is not Aaron Hernandez, but they yeah. they're 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 in that ilk of we've got two guys that if they catch the football at the tight end position, they can do something with it. Um, in the coverage, they're a mismatch regardless of who you put on them, and you're probably going to see a lot of tight end targets this season, which is what the Patriots made their made their hay on during those mm-hmm. Super Bowl runs, right? So right. I think like that's the difference between this Carolina Panthers team and the Bills team way better at quarterback because I don't think 2017 cam can hold a candle to Josh Allen mm-hmm. way, way better at the tight end position. And I think head coaching sometimes does lead to more wins. Mm-hmm. Um, not when it's Sean McDermott versus Andy Reed, but certainly when it's Sean McDermott versus Ron Rivera, I think the bills yeah. have the better head coach there. I can't believe you're spitting on the ghost of Ed Dixon at the tight end <laughs> position for the Carolina Panthers led the Carolina Panthers in targets at the tight end position. With forty now, if that up. was a healthy Greg Olson season yeah, in twenty seventeen, yeah, I may well, not have made that bold of Greg a statement. Olson, but Greg Olson was also thirty two uh, in yeah, twenty seventeen exactly. and exactly. only played seven games and only had ten less targets than Ed Dixon. So I'm right. not going to say things didn't wildly spiral out of control for Carolina. <laughs> got away from the season. Yeah, I think McCaffrey got hurt that year too, right? Uh, McCaffrey 21. played all sixteen games. Did he? Okay. Yeah, played all sixteen. Now I'm sure he was captain day to day because that's Christian McCaffrey. Every day of his NFL Every career, he's, yeah. yeah, he's like Arian Foster, right? He was like, he was like Captain Doubtful, like you just, yeah, because he only started ten, he only yeah. started in ten games, so right. yeah. Well, you know, they had Jonathan Stewart, man. Yeah, I guess. How can two running backs get the start, <laughs> man? <laughs> How did two running backs get the start? Um, but you know, a fun exercise here because again. I'm not saying that this is something that Bills fans necessarily need to be concerned about, but it is something that you need to be aware of, that there's history here that says we're not going to invest premium picks at the wide receiver position, right? Like this is the organization, Carolina, this is where Bean came from. And while they had success, it was moderate success. It wasn't ever sustained, but it's what he's familiar with. And it does make this, it does make sense when you see them trade a first round pick for Stefan Diggs. You're like, okay, I get it. I, I get it. Right. Yeah. You're going to go, you're going to go get the guy instead of hoping you draft the guy. Okay. I get it. Right. You got a yep. rookie or, you know, you got a rookie or a young quarterback. You don't want to pair him with a young wide receiver. I, I know I, I understand what you're doing, yep. but we're past that. Now that time is over. Mm-hmm. That player is gone. And now you're really going to see what the theory behind team building is, because I think a lot of it got covered up by Stefan Dix. This mm-hmm. team has been bad at drafting receivers, bad, like bad, bad, bad. So yeah, I mean, you've, you've crossed the threshold from go get your, your quarterback, uh, a wide receiver to elevate his game to now you need your quarterback to go make the guys around him better. Right. Right. And yeah, I think that's something that Buffalo has struggled with so far. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know I don't know if you can argue that Josh Allen has made any of his weapons better because he's the quarterback. Yeah. Um, uh, so so this year is the year that really that gets tested is right. can can he make these guys around him better? Can he can he bring back 2017 or uh 2020 Curtis Samuel where he's going to catch, you know, 60 balls for 850 yards and four touchdowns, right? Like that's his top can he allow Khalil Shakir to take the next step. Can he bring Keon Coleman to be an impactful member of the, of the staff? Um, can he allow Dalton Kincaid to take the next step and become a thousand yard receiver and 10 touchdowns type of player? Like, you know, Josh, you're getting paid a quarter of a billion dollars mm-hmm. to, to go win football games while yep. also making these guys around you better. And it's time mm-hmm. to kind of the rubber needs to hit the road in this season heading into next year. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and I think it's it's an interesting conversation when you talk about the Bills draft history at the wide receiver position, because since Sean McDermott arrived, so let's remove Brandon Bean. We'll just because let's include Zay Jones because it, you know, sure. let's just include Zay Jones. So since 2017, the Bills put a second round pick on Zay Jones. The Bills have drafted. Let's just do the math here. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So excluding Keon Coleman, the Bills have drafted eight wide receivers since 2017. So we're not going to include this year's draft class. How many of them saw the entire length of their contract with with the Bills? I don't think any of them have, have they? Oh, Gabe Davis would have. Just Gabe Davis. Yeah. That's how and bad would, you've been at drafting wide and receivers. And I, I would go another step to say, those of you who are watching or listening to this, go don't Google it. How many of those can you get? Can you name? How many yeah. of those eight can you even name? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. like forget how many made their made made the length of their contract. How many do you even know? Yeah. So pause the video right now. Go ahead and put in the comments <laughs> section. Yeah. Hey, go go ahead. But Ryan, let's. You want to play a game? Let's play a game. Do you think you could I, do it? I I don't think I could do it. Okay. Honestly, I mean, All right, well, I, I, will... gave, I gave you one in Zay Jones, and you already mentioned Gabe Davis. Okay, so there's two. You got six more. Who are who are the other six? Yeah. Um. So they didn't draft shorter, right? Yeah, they did. They did draft shorter. So Justin yep. Shorter. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so the, yeah, kind That's of a three. layup situation. <laughs> so, Talil Shakir. They have drafted Talil yep. Shakir. Yep. <laughs> um, so that's four. They. Oh, gee. Yeah. See, they would have drafted. <laughs> um, oh, I, I, I might be out. At four. Already, I might Come be out. On, Ryan, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't tell you more than four. Okay, so was, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple hints. Right, they drafted this kick returner. He, they put him on, uh, they put him on IR, designated to return. This was a couple seasons ago. Smaller kick returner. I, I got okay, Marquez Stevenson. Okay, uh, Marquez yeah, Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I, Isaiah Hodges. Okay, yeah, that name sounds familiar. Now it gets really hard. Yeah. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod. Oh, who Mario considers a not a draft bust because he, <laughs> he played, played in a for, Super yeah. Bowl. <laughs> they played in the Super Bowl, and um, or Ricky Prohl's son was it Austin Prohl? Austin Prohl. Yeah, Austin Prohl. There it is. Okay. There's all eight. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, there's all eight, but the bills have been, been terrible at drafting receivers. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's just, and I get that it's a hard position to hit, right? Like what, what, what did they, what's the stat? Like to want, they consider drafted wide receivers, like less than 20% of them see the length of their NFL contract, right. From their rookie deal. I get yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, name, name an NFL team. That's good at drafting wide yeah. receivers, right? right. Like, yeah, exactly. like the yeah. Rams. Yeah. And that end of list at that yeah. point. Right. So, yeah. And that's just recent history. Yeah. You right. know, like that's just, that's just recent history. Um, it's but definitely not the Packers. To, <laughs> but if you're going to, but if you're going to be good, if you're going to be, a, if you're going to be a good football team, you have to have wide receivers. Yeah. And if you're going to be a GM, like you've either, you've either got to be able to pick wide receivers or you've got to have a really good scouting department. That's going to go find you wide receivers mm-hmm. because right. you're going to be, judged by the players that you put on the field and mm-hmm. um yeah i mean that's a problem san francisco maybe is another one that's pretty good at, at identifying wide receiver talent yeah we know kansas city's not nope. we just i mean we know that so yeah. you know that's one where you're not necessarily behind kansas kansas city <laughs> in those situations like yeah they, they picked up one and that was tyree kill right mm-hmm. and traded him yeah so but the the fact still remains, right? Like it's there's some things as a Bills fan you just have to get comfortable with, and mm-hmm. you just have to get comfortable with the fact that Buffalo is is unless there's a dire circumstance. And I would say that this year was dire in that respect. And look at look at what happened. Um, you're not going to see this team draft a first round wide receiver. They they'll acquire one. They won't they won't trade one or they won't draft one. They'll they'll they, acquire they, 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 one their first round pick for a wide receiver, but it will not right. be in the draft. Right. Or they may trade, you know, may trade picks for a player who was a first round wide receiver, mm-hmm. right? Like that, that may happen, but I, I just don't see being 
pulling the trigger on drafting the first round wide wide receiver. I, no, I just I don't either. I just don't see it. Um all right. Hey, good conversation. I was a little worried about this one. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to know do we have enough for a show? I sure did say that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, do you think we got enough here? You're like, ah, yeah, I think, I think so. <laughs> so I'm I'm, this, no, I'm nothing if not a good filibuster. Yeah, you are very good at that. You are very good at that. Uh, so if you uh, caught this episode, make sure to go back and watch the live stream that Ryan and I did going over, you know, everything that's kind of made up the bills this off season and how it impacts them in the future. Some of the things that have gone on in the recent past. Uh, then we broke down the draft in another separate episode. And of course you saw this one. So leave a comment, leave a like and follow the page for more content. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, and we will see you out with Sean uh, from Mr. Rogers Holmes, the sponsor for hashtag sports uh, in the 2024 season. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Hello, fellow Bills fans. Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth? And right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun, utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo!